Greetings, Laddingtons. Today I want to chime in to the Jordan Peterson Dismantled video. I will link it below and I suggest that you watch it after watching this video so that you can get my perspective upon it first. Or if you've already watched it, you know what is up. So first and foremost, I would like to say something that applies to my own work as well as Jordan Peterson's work as well as whichever metapolitical or cultural work you talk about. So if I make one video where I train, it's supposed to be a training motivation video. You have one guy, one of you watching this who say, that looks fun and epic, I'm going to hit the gym now. That's my purpose also with making these videos. Then you have a second guy who says, oh, this looks fun and good, but uh, I don't want to do it for whatever reason. Then you might have a third guy who says, oh, that, uh, why does he do that? It's, uh, what's the purpose? And the same thing if I make a video saying, stop watching porn because it decreases your willpower in your brain. You have one guy who says, yeah, he's absolutely correct, I will stop uh, doing that because it's bad for me. Then you might have a second guy who says, yeah, he's completely correct, I uh, wish I could stop, but I don't have the willpower to stop. Then you might have a third guy who says, why is he talking about that? I'm gonna do what I want with my life. So my point being here is that whatever I tell you, there are certain guys who will interpret it in a certain way and certain other guys who will interpret it in another way. Same thing for Jordan Peterson. So he might have, so to give an example, if Jordan Peterson reaches a thousand guys with a certain teaching at a lecture saying that, you know, improve yourself because postmodernism is a problem to the West. Maybe half of them will say, yeah, you know what, I'm going to improve myself and these problems are facing the West. They will then continue on further along the path of enlightenment and perhaps become an identitarian or a nationalist or a traditionalist or whatever. Half of the guys will say, you know what, Jordan Peterson said that collectivism is bad, so therefore we're not going to participate in this sort of thing. The point being is that he can have a great effect upon some guys and he can have a detrimental effect upon some other guys. Same thing for me, I don't know, I have, soon I will have a hundred thousand subscribers. It's not that everyone takes everything I say and follows through on it. I have maybe a thousand guys doing that, my thousand glorious disciples as it were, who actually takes it to heart and enacts upon what I, my teachings basically. And then you have some guys who might just watch for fun or whatever. Um, same thing with Jordan Peterson, so you don't know what the effect will be if he says something. So that's just something that you must keep in mind whenever you look upon anyone, really. And I've talked about more conservative, civic nationalist, alt-light guys before, and I've said, you know what, they will hopefully convert some normies to more critical thinking, and the best of those normies will then continue further along the path of enlightenment, and perhaps stumble upon my video and get some glorious bills. So the best of the people Jordan Peterson has criticizing the institutions, the best of them will go further along. So he's doing great work in that regard. However, he is also very dangerous in the way that the documentary portrays. Because he is obviously a man of, he's um, got a lot of gravitas, people listen to him, and if he says something, there will be people who takes that to heart. So if he says collectivism is bad, some of his disciples will say, yeah, you know what, uh, our grand uh, master said this, and I completely understand this. I obviously want my disciples to listen to me as well. It's just that I try to be intellectually honest, and I don't think Jordan Peterson is this when he talks about two things, collectivism and the Jewish question, or as he calls it, the so-called Jewish question. And they go into each other very well, because it's basically the same thing. He says the Jews are successful because they have a high IQ. And yeah, sure, Jews have a very good culture of studying hard and they have a high IQ on average. So you would probably find the Jews in high positions in society anyway, but here's the thing, that's not the answer. The reason Jews are in high positions, the reason Jews are powerful, is that they work together. That's because they view themselves as Jews, they view themselves as being part of a collective. For many Jewish guys, they wake up in the morning asking, how can I best serve Israel or the Jewish people today? That's their perspective. For most white guys, for most Western guys, they wake up in the morning asking, how can I help myself best today? So that's a huge difference between Jews and uh, whites when it comes to getting, you know, getting high up in the institutions. And the same thing with Israel. 
because they are fanatically loyal to Israel, many Jews. Whereas most white guys are loyal to no one but themselves. And there you see individualism versus collectivism, which wins every single time. Yes, collectivism. You can see that that is why Jews have so much power in the United States. Because they work together and because they're very loyal and they're very generous towards each other. Whereas whites are very greedy and very individualistic. They don't care about each other, they care only about themselves and their next instant gratification. Very important black pill to take, but it needs to be taken. Uh, whites are not as loyal or as generous as Jews when it comes to supporting their own group. And I wish more whites would take their own side, because now they don't. Now they think it's too... it's bad for business to take their own side, so therefore they don't. So no, Jordan Pitchon, it's not because Jews are more intelligent than whites that they have higher positions, it's because they work together as a collective. Now also, it's quite fun that Jordan Peterson says that collectivism is bad when his work is dependent upon him getting revenue from a collective of mostly white guys. Same thing for me, I have a much smaller collective because he is more popular than I am. But still, I have Patreons who enable me to make these videos, otherwise I couldn't make videos basically every single day, then I would have to do other things as well, which I do by the way, I have two companies plus another endeavor, so I do have to do this. Same thing with Jordan Pitchon, he is enabled by a collective of guys to do his work. If he didn't have this collective of people supporting him, then he wouldn't have the ability to do all these things. So the financial support he gets from that certain collective of individuals enables him to do his work. Simple as that. So if he says, oh, you know what, it's only about the individual, that's not true. It's a lie and uh, dishonest to everyone who supports him as well. I've been quite clear from the beginning that I am a champion, as it were, of my people or something like that. I am the voice of a people. Then I have people behind me supporting me. That's how it goes. I'm not doing this by myself. I'm not alone in this. That's very narcissistic to think and I get accused of being narcissistic all the time but at least I understand that I'm not alone, I'm not doing this alone. I couldn't do this by myself, I couldn't do this without the support of my collective, I couldn't do this without all of my ancestors having laid the groundwork for me to be able to be here in a nice comfortable room uh, with internet. And I'm not disattached from my ancestors either. I'm the latest reincarnation of my ancestors, so I'm not an individual, no one is an individual. We do live in a society, and uh, everyone is dependent to a certain extent on other people. So that is something that Jordan Pitchon must recognize. And then also we can talk about why Muslims are more dominant in certain situations than white guys. Yet again, because the Muslims are simply more. There are more guys in every single spot. So if we look upon Conor McGregor versus Khabib, the fights that took place afterwards, they depended on two things, that the Muslims are more guys and they're sober. And they have a driving force, they have Islam that makes them strong. Westerners have degeneracy, which makes us weak. So yes, obviously Muslims will dominate whites in a lot of social situations, in a lot of violent situations, which isn't all-out warfare, but it's still violence. They dominate because they work together. Whites, they work for themselves, individuals. So anyway, point being, and my take on this whole situation, if you want to understand the world, understand that collectivist tribes beat individualist tribes every single time, especially if you compete in the same society, which we now do. We could have individualism when we lived in homogeneous white societies, but guess what? We don't. We don't do that anymore, so it's just a dream, it's a foolish dream, and it's pacifying to not tell white guys to team up. I say this all the time, get your menerbund, get your community, make connections, network as much as you can. That's my advice. Thank you for watching, XXO. Boom.